Good morning. Hope you've enjoyed some of the nice weather we've had kind of the end of this week. I, I remember when we first started doing these, I said, we're going to be doing this for just a, a couple of weeks, a few weeks in Michigan. We're told that April 13th, we've got to stay home until then, which means we will miss Easter. Will that change? We don't know. Maybe we'll be back together for Easter. And well, it's been a lot longer than that. And we're not sure when we're going to be done with this. Hopefully pretty soon. But then again, I was hopeful when we first started. But kind of things have changed. Remember, remember when the food bank was people joining hands in prayer ahead of time and, and visiting with people as they came in, and, and now it has turned into this. Or remember when, if you wore a mask into a bank, the police were called. Nowadays, if you can get into a bank and you don't have a mask on, the police are called. Remember when I didn't need a haircut? It's past due. Remembering, <clears throat> that's part of what this weekend is all about. Memorial Day is a day we remember. This memorial, we go to the cemeteries and we honor those that fought. We honor those that, that have passed away. It's a time to remember them. Memorial Day has its roots after the Civil War and remembering those that fought there. But it's expanded beyond that to we go there for many different reasons. But Memorial Day is one of those reasons that we go, we plant flowers, and we remember. Sometimes we remember by just getting with friends. I remember I, I felt sorry for Holly a couple years ago, shortly after we had moved back. <clears throat> My best friend in high school and his wife and then another couple that were really good friends from high school and played football with a guy and then Judy was really a close friend. We got together over in Chelsea and we talked and, and we talked and we talked and we remembered, you know, back when we were in college and I kind of felt sorry for Holly and then Beth, that's Brad's wife, because they weren't a part of when we were there. But when you get together with friends, you remember things from the past. Or sometimes we'll talk about the good old days. Remember the good old days when you could go into a restaurant? Yeah, we remember. And remembering is good because there's a saying, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And I think that fits us well as servants of God, as, as individuals trying to follow God. See, we, we need to remember what God has done. First thing I want to talk about is remember the sea. The Israelites were at the Red Sea. Pharaoh had decided, I am going to not let them go. After he had decided to let them go, they go out and he's starting to come. And they're at the Red Sea. And what are they going to do? Well, they failed to remember all the miracles that God had performed through Moses. All the plagues that had come on Egypt that hadn't come on them. They failed to remember that they, without raising a sword, plundered the Egyptians, so to speak. As, as they left Egypt, the Egyptians were giving them gold and silver and food and, and everything. Please just go. They plundered them from slaves to plundering. See, they, they failed to remember all of that. Pharaoh is approaching. And they say, it would have been better for us to die back in Egypt or to be slaves back in Egypt, rather than to wander out here and to be slaughtered. And some of us take them back anyway. It would have been better to not have messed things up. Think about all that God had done to Pharaoh. But it, but it would be better because we're going to get killed anyways. You know, we, we fail to remember, we fail to think about what's going on. I have this swampy area, kind of at the back corner of my property. It's a low area. Some years I can't even mow it until July. If we get a lot of rain in the springtime, it's just a swamp. Well, I've taken some chunks of cement and kind of made a border around it. Just, just to show you how swampy it is, there are cattails that grow there. So I've, I've got this area, I've made a border around it. <clears throat> the other day, I borrowed Bryson's truck. I went and I got a bunch of topsoil. Paid money for it, which is kind of one of those weird things. I'm paying money to buy dirt, but that's kind of like 
paying money to drink water, but we won't go there. I paid money, had them loaded up, went home, shoveled it into a wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow load, I hauled down, put it down there, got a rake, <clears throat> raked it all down smooth, filled in part of the area. Some of it I just kind of sectioned off, and I'm just going to let that be a swamp. The rest of it I filled in. Then I went and got some grass seed that I had bought, sprinkled that all on there, went and got a bag of peat moss. Again, more dirt that I had bought. Sprinkled that on top of that. Then I went and put straw down to help keep the moisture in. Then I watered my swampy area. Yeah, that's a little strange, but I watered my swampy area. I did all that to get the grass to grow. So think about all that I'd done, all the work I put into that to get this grass to grow in that area. <clears throat> Let's say it starts to grow. Am I going to then go get a bunch of Roundup and kill all the grass? No. Why would I put all that work into it to have this nice grass area just to kill the grass? God did not do everything he did in Egypt for the Israelites to then be brought out and killed at the edge of the Red Sea. See, they didn't think about it. They didn't remember all God had done. They didn't remember what Moses had told them. And they panicked. They wavered. Their trust. Is it going to happen? We don't know. We should have just stayed back there. What's important for them and for us is how God reacted. I want to turn to Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. I want to read, pick it up in verse 21. This is as Pharaoh's army is approaching. It says, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove back with a strong east wind and turned the sea into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. They went through on dry ground. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29 says a similar thing, that they went through on dry ground. They panicked. What are we going to do? We're going to die out here. God spread the sea, and they walked through on dry land. See, we need to remember the sea. They forgot about it. Okay? Let's jump over to the New Testament. Jesus had showed his power to the apostles. He had turned water to wine. They'd seen, that. They'd seen him heal people with leprosy. They'd seen him heal others. And now they're out on a boat. And there's a storm. And they panic. Go to Mark chapter 4. I want to read starting in verse 38. Mark chapter 4, verse 38. The apostles are panicking here. So then, so Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. The wind died down. It was completely calm. He said to the disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. We need to remember the seas in life. The times when the waves are crashing over in our life, when things are not going well. When we, we maybe have a tendency to not trust God. When we panic. We need to remember the seas. The Israelites were at the Red Sea and God parted it. And they walked through. The storms were there. The boat was going to get swamped. Jesus stopped the wind and the waves. And the sea was calm. We need to remember the seas. God will walk us through them. God will calm the things. How, I don't know. But we need to not panic. So we need to remember the sea. The second thing we need to remember is the speech. I'm going to stay here in Mark and start in Mark 14, something that I touched on last week. Mark chapter 14, I want to read verse 31. This is when Jesus said, I'm going to get betrayed by all of you. You're all going to scatter. And Peter steps up and says, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. 
we're going to be with you, Jesus. We are not going to abandon you. All of them said that. And we know the outcome. They were scattered. It's very easy to make bold statements. It's very easy to, in the middle of a comfortable place, say, I am going to serve God. I am going to be godly. I am going to do this. It's a lot harder when we get out there in the world and someone treats us badly. When things don't go how we think they should. But we can make, easily make those bold statements. Maybe sometimes our speech is self-serving. Still in Mark, over to chapter 10. Back a couple pages. Mark chapter 10. I want to read starting in verse 35. Mark 10, 35. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. We want to be your top two lieutenants. I mean, Jesus, you called us sons of thunder. Boom, we're there for you. We need to be at your right. We need to be the men that are right beside you when you take on the Romans, when you kick the Romans out of this land. So they come to Jesus. We want to be your guys. It's kind of self-centered. Well, how did the rest feel about all that? Well, drop down to verse 41. It says, when the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Yeah, why do you guys think you should be the best? See, sometimes we use our speech for self-serving purposes. We will maybe use it to get what we want. Sometimes we'll put someone down, we'll be cruel. Sometimes we hurt people with what we say. Why? Well, maybe we went to, maybe we just don't think. Maybe we just don't care. We care more about ourselves and the words that come out of our mouth than what they're going to have an effect on others. See, we need to remember our speech as we go through life. We need to remember the seas, the time that we fail. Not that we're better than anyone else. Though we have a tendency to, to want to feel that way at times. You know, in, in my eyes, I'm not as bad as them and we have a tendency to judge. Well, this is just a little sin. That's a big sin. Well, sin is sin. And we are all sinners. This brings me to my third point. Remember the sin. No. Hebrews chapter 10. I want to read verses 16 and 17 there. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. What we have here is the writer of Hebrews. He is inspired by God's Holy Spirit to quote a passage back from Jeremiah. Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 16. This is a covenant I will make with him. After that time, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. I'm going to have a new covenant with them. My new covenant, the sins will be no more. They'll be gone. Our sins are washed away. That, Paul tells us that. If you go back to Acts chapter 22, Acts 22 verse 16, Paul is recounting when he became a Christian here. And he says, and now what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and wash your sins away, calling on his name. He says, that's what I was told to do. That's what I did. I got up. I had my sins washed away. You ever, you ever spill something on you? I've had tendencies where I've been a little more clumsy than I'd like to be. And I spill something on a shirt. <clears throat> you can ask Kyle, I get frustrated. It's like, ah, why? Ugh, how did I'm so... I don't react well when I mess up. I get frustrated. There's a stain on my shirt. Maybe it's one of my favorite shirts. I know it's been some I've liked. Holly just says, relax, take it off. She puts a stain stick on it, rubs it on there, and sometimes she'll immediately wash it. Sometimes she'll wash it the next time she does it. And when she pulls it out of the wash machine, the stain is washed away. It's gone. Our sins are removed. They're washed away. God remembers them no more. Or remember when? No. It's gone. So what do we need to remember? We, we don't remember our sins. What we need to remember is a sacrifice. The verse just before this in Hebrews that we looked at, Hebrews back to chapter 10. I want to read verse 14. 
says, For by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. By one sacrifice they're being made perfect. The word there means accomplished, complete. Righteous in God's eyes. By that one sacrifice, we are made sinless, complete for eternity. Think about that. We're made perfect. We are sinless. The sins are no longer there. We need to grasp that. Now, I, I know if you talk with me much or you listen to these sermons carefully, you notice I use the word grasp a lot. I, I like that word. I'm going to give you the definition of it here. In the verb form, before I use it, you need to grasp something. The verb form means to seize or hold firmly. We need to seize, we need to hold firmly the sacrifice given for us. That sacrifice that we may have eternal life. We need to grasp that sacrifice. And the other part of that is, we need to remember the Savior. John tells us over in 1 John chapter 4, only verse 14, 1 John 4, 14. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Yeah, we're aware he's a Savior. It's a religious term we use it all the time. But the root word of that means to keep safe. The Savior of the world came to keep safe you safe to keep God's people safe safe for what kept safe for eternity I, I kind of like that idea of being kept safe if you remember when you were a kid a storm happens or something you go you, you, you snuggle up next to mom or dad because you feel safe there see he's our safe he is keeping us safe we snuggle up next to Jesus we are kept safe through the Savior. Another passage along this line is over in Titus. Titus chapter 3. I want to read verses 4 through 6 here. At one time you too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of the righteous things we have done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by His Spirit. Wow. Finishing off that, it says, Whom He poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Once we were, now we have been washed through Christ. It talks about the kindness, the love, the mercy, not through anything we have done but because of God. See, it's not because of what we've done, because we mess up. See, we're not always good, because we have seas that come to us in life. The times when we freak out, when we panic, when we don't trust God, when our mind goes blank to all the ways, all the time, He has taken care of us. Everything God has done for us, they're gone, and we panic. Unfortunately, that's part of being human. Fortunately, it does not depend on us because of God's love for us. Because of our speech, it would, well, it falls short at times. We say wonderful words. God, I commit my whole life to you, and then we fail him. We sometimes say things that are hurtful. We sometimes say things that are self-serving because it makes us feel better, look better, or put someone else down. Sometimes we say things without even thinking of the consequences, thinking how that's going to affect others. We need God's love. Then there are our sins. Or, or, or should I say, there were our sins. Or should I say, what sins? See, we need to be mindful of our sins, but even more mindful that they're removed. They are gone. God has removed our sins because of the sacrifice of our Savior. We need to grasp that. We need to realize what He has done for us. I don't know how much longer we're going to be coming to you from my office. 
be put online, hopefully, maybe the 1st of June. Who knows when our stay home, stay safe order will be rescinded and we can start to get together. We can now as a religious group, but we want to take the utmost caution. But over the next few weeks, we'll start talking about this. But we need to remember what has been done for us through the sacrifice of our Savior. Think about that as you go through this week. How much you are loved. Stay safe. I love you. here in my office. But out of extreme caution, we've decided to temporarily suspend our general meeting times together. So we're coming together from here. And, and let me Morning. tell you, everyone, coming to you again this week from my office here. We've, we've been told by the president, we've been told by newscasters and others again and again that this is an unprecedented journey that we're on. Michigan. We're told that April 13th, we've got to stay home until then, which means we will miss Easter. Will that change? We don't know. Maybe we'll be back together for Easter. Maybe not. But for now, we're missing those hugs. Save them up because in a few weeks, a few months, whenever we get back together, we're going to get those out. We're going to have lots of hugs to give out. The apex, they talk about when it's going to be in flattening the curve and all of that. And, and we don't know. At one point, they said, hey, we may be back by Easter. Now they're saying maybe the end of April. No one knows. So I can't wait until we get back together and we can raise our voices and praise to God. Hopefully it'll be soon, but whenever it is, we will do that together. Well, now, well, we, we don't know. At first we were told that we would, we would have to be a group of 10 or less. Or it was 100 or less, 50 or less, 10 or less. Then we were till the 14th, I think they were saying, 13th or 14th of April. Now they're saying the end of April. And, uh, you know, it could be longer now. It probably is going to be at least 1st of May. Welcome back to my office. We're still going at it from here, even though it's been a while since we've been doing this. And hopefully we'll get back soon. It's been put online. Hopefully, maybe the 1st of June. So when you're standing in the rain again, you might as well be dancing. Why? Because there ain't no storm that can change how this ends. Next time when you feel blue, don't let the smile leave you. Why? Cause you have every reason just to sing. So the back row hears you glide. Cause walking just a world to dance. You don't have to know how to. Ever since, ever since Grace got you left. Your whole side's hurt and smile. Like you just got away with something. Why? Cause you just got away with something. Grace got you. Grace got you.